Uh, my name's Lawrence Packer. I'm a professor of biology at York University and I study bees. There are almost 20,000 described species of bees. 900 of them are found in Canada. Without them, the world would look a completely different place and it would be rather difficult for us to get most of our fruit and vegetables and coffee would be ever so expensive. Perhaps as much as 30% of the food that we eat depends upon pollination by some organism or other and most of that pollination is done by bees. For example, here we've got tomatillos, which requires pollination. And then here we can see okra. Here's the beautiful okra flower. And here's a tasty okra. A lady's fingers is another name for it. Back over there, there's blueberries and raspberries to my left. And there's also strawberries that are all finished now. As has been pointed out in the media a lot lately, bees are in trouble. And it's not just honeybees that are in trouble. In fact, I've not seen a single honeybee in my garden this year. But some of the other species of bees are also in trouble. What was one of the most common bumblebees in southern Ontario 20 years ago is now all but extinct in, in the entire country of Canada. It's now only found at the Plinary Provincial Park. There are other bumblebees whose populations have decreased dramatically. And so it's important for people to be able to increase the diversity and attractiveness of their gardens for bees. So you can make your backyard more friendly for bees. By doing this, you increase the pollination of the fruits and vegetables in your own backyard, which produces nice, nutritional, healthful food for you and also for your neighbors. A healthy garden that's healthy for bees is healthy for people too. So there are at least two different species of bees nesting in my old raspberry canes and they both make these nice little round holes and they build their nest inside the pith, inside the dead raspberry cane. So if you're really keen you can build condos for bees like this one here. What we can see here is in these holes there's one, two, three different nests and they've actually been made probably by different species and this one I saw finishing its nest just yesterday. And you can see that they've plugged their entrances with mud or leaves. Even if you live in a high-rise, you can attract bees to pollinate fruits and vegetables that you grow in pots on the balcony. Bees have been found at least up to the 26th floor of high-rises in New York, and I'm sure they are just as active at high altitude here in Toronto. So this is a yellow jacket, and many people mistake these for bees. Yellow jackets are wasps, and they eat meat whereas bees are vegetarians and they eat pollen and nectar. It's the yellow jackets that are disturbing you in your barbecues late in summer because they're looking for some meat to take home to the nest. Often because people confuse the two, bees have got a bit of a bad reputation. Bees will only sting you if you catch them or if you sit on them or if one lands on your hair and you brush your hair. Bees will only sting in self-defense. If you're interested in finding out more about the bees of the world and the interesting things they get up to, then please read my book. The proceeds from sales of my book go towards bee conservation research. You can also look at the links provided here, which will give you all sorts of different kinds of information about bees and how you can help them.